Hi, this is Chris Collins, and I'm going to show you how to fix an issue that comes up frequently with MIDI drum pads, um, particularly when you're using them in a digital audio workstation or DAW, such as the one I have open here, Mixcraft Pro Studio 7. Um, this can happen with any digital audio workstation. It all depends on the virtual instruments you're using. Well, what is this problem I'm talking about? It is where you are playing notes on your drum pad and you're not hearing any notes played back by the virtual instrument. Um, now, there could be a number of reasons why this might be happening. You could have your MIDI device configured incorrectly um, or a number of other things, but I'm going to specifically deal with an issue uh, that is caused by the way that most drum pads send MIDI data. Um, in short, most drum pads send, send extremely short notes. And sometimes these notes are so short they can uh, mess with the virtual instrument. Like the virtual instrument might not even detect the note. And therefore you don't hear anything. Or maybe you'll hear like one out of every like 10 drum hits or something. Um, so there... There's two issues really that I've run into uh, with virtual instruments and drum pads. Number one, uh, as I mentioned, the drum sends notes that are too short. Um, this has to do with how MIDI data is sent. So um, if you have a MIDI keyboard um, and you press a note down on that keyboard, it will send a note on event telling the software that, hey, a note has been pressed. When you let go of that note, it sends a note off letting the software know that the note has been let go. So that's how, you know, it knows how long to hold the note down. Um, drum pads typically send the note on and the note off event simultaneously. So depending on the virtual instrument you're using, it might not even have a chance to get the note started before it stopped. Um, the second issue that sometimes comes up is MIDI drum pads often will send data over channel 10. While most virtual instruments do not have any problem listening on channel 10 for MIDI data. Some will ignore channels other than one, for example. Um, so these are the two issues that I'm going to deal with in this video. Now, uh, the, f the, the best way if you can do this to deal with this is to read your manual for your drum pad and you might be able to actually adjust, uh, you might be able to adjust the delay between um, the note on and the note off event. Um, or you might be able to disable note off events altogether. And you might also be able to change the MIDI device, or I'm sorry, the MIDI channel that your drum pad outputs its MIDI data on. Um, that would be the ideal way to resolve this issue. So look into that first. But if you are unable to do that, there is software available that will let you do this. Um, it's, a it's a tiny bit complicated, but not really. Um, I say not really because it, it, because it's not complicated for me, but what does that mean? I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. You're, you're going to need to download two pieces of software. Uh, the first one is a virtual MIDI cable. Whoops. Let me get all these tabs out of here. Can you tell how prepared I am for doing this video? All right. The first, uh, the first site you're going to want to go to is www.copperland.org. And... Um, this uh, is a virtual MIDI cable. Now there are other virtual MIDI cables out there. If you have a preference, you can use that other program, whether it's Loop B or um, uh, I forget what all the other ones are. There, there are, are others out there. I've used others. I like this one the best, so this is the one I'm going to show you how to use. Um, right on the front page, you get this download Copperland link right here. Just click on the screen, the screenshot, and. It will tell you, uh, it'll give you an option to download for different OSs. Um, if you haven't figured out already, this tutorial is for Windows machines. Um, I'm not sure if, maybe this will work on Mac too. I guess it all depends on if the second program works on Mac. I haven't checked yet. Uh, for now, we're going to just assume you're using Windows and using uh, something more modern than Windows XP. And of course, this works on XP too. Just download the right version for your OS save it and run it. Um, I'm actually going to skip that step personally because I already have it installed, but you go ahead and save it and run it and follow the, the instructions in the installer. Um, I can't remember if the Copperland installer asks you uh, about how many MIDI ports you want to install. Um, I went with four. 
Um, you can do however many you want. Four is a decent number. Um, so if, the, if it asks you that, I would just go with four. Now the second site you want to go to is Midiox. www.midiox.com And uh, so we go to, I think actually we just scroll down on the main page. And here's the link to the latest Midiox. We'll click on that. Unless you're using a really old Windows version, um, like older than XP, you do not need to pay any attention to the Windows installer update part. So let's just scroll past that, pretend it doesn't exist. And then we have MIDIOX 7.0.2, which may or may not be the same version uh, that's still available whenever you happen to be watching this. Regardless, doesn't matter. Click download, save it, run it, uh, run the installer. And uh, once you have both of those programs installed, we're going to finish the setup for your virtual MIDI cable driver. Uh, so you should have an icon somewhere for Copperland, Man uh, I think it's Copperland Manager. Let's see, Copperland, yes, Copperland Manager. Launch that. And when that comes up, you'll get uh, tips, I think. All these things uh, bouncing around the screen. Um, actually, we're only going to use like a subset of all that Copperland can do. There's a lot of things you can do over the network and other things. We're not even going to bother with any of that. Just no need to. Um, you'll see the, uh, well, MIDI on and then your computer's name. We're going to uh, go to the connect tab here and we're going to expand this by clicking on it. And you can see uh, the four virtual MIDI cables that I've installed. Now these in order for these to actually pass data through uh, to the other side of the MIDI cable, which I can explain that concept a little bit more later, uh, we're going to need to click on the MIDI one as I just did there, then click on virtual MIDI cable and add a MIDI cable. Okay, now we have this MIDI on Sully. We're going to click that and we're going to connect the uh, VMIDI one output driver to the VMIDI, VMIDI one input driver. All right, so that's connected now. VMIDI one, virtual MIDI cable, VMIDI one. And let's do that with the other three as well. So clicking on VMIDI two, virtual MIDI cable, or sorry, MIDI virtual cable, add a cable that two. And we'll do the same thing with three. And we'll do the same thing with four. All right, so now I can use all four of those cables. That's all we need to do. So I'm going to close out of the Copperland Manager now. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are not trying to access the MIDI input driver for your drum pad within your digital audio workstation. Um, there, most programs will have a setting for choosing MIDI devices. I'm going to show you what Mixcraft has, but uh, when I go into the preferences, you'll lose the ability to hear me for a brief moment, but I'll at least show you what it looks like. So as you could see, there were a number of MIDI devices listed, uh, MIDI input devices listed, I should clarify, and so you could uncheck or check some of them. You want to make sure that you uncheck the box for your whatever your drum, uh, drum pad is called for the MIDI input driver, because what we're going to do is we're going to actually open that driver within MIDI Ox, and then we're going to transform that MIDI data and send it through vMIDI 1, which is one of the virtual MIDI cable uh, ports that we just installed with the copper LAN. If that makes sense, awesome. You're, you're, you're smart. I, I'm making this sound more, diff, more complicated than it is. Um, the reason we have to do that is because uh, if you try to open the driver, the input driver with both programs, both MIDI Ox and your digital audio workstation, you're going to have a, a conflict, um, and only one of those two uh, one of the, only one of those two programs, whichever you opened first, will receive that MIDI data. Okay, so now that you have disabled your drum pads MIDI input driver in your digital audio workstation, we are going to start up MIDI Ox. So. Um, 
the first thing you'll need to do in MIDIOX is you'll need to um, decide which ports you want it to have access to. You're going to want to click this little icon here, uh, select MIDI devices to open. Again, we only want it to access the ports it's going to use so that it doesn't, so that we don't have any conflicts with other software trying to access these MIDI drivers. So for MIDI input, you want to choose your drum pad MIDI driver for this. Um, the reason I'm choosing vMIDI 4 is I actually don't have a drum pad, so I'm simulating one over vMIDI 4. Um, so you select your drum pad here. I'm selecting vMIDI 4 and pretend that says awesome drum pad or something. And then for MIDI output, you want to select vMIDI 1 and click OK. Now you'll notice these lines. These are connections. Um, so uh, you get a connection between vMIDI 4, or actually, sorry, your drum pad and vMIDI 1. And also at the same time, you get a connection through a MIDIOX event port, which is uh, where MIDIOX, you can set MIDIOX to send um, different MIDI signals and stuff. You, that's not important right now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into my DAW here, Digital Audio Workstation, and I'm going to select um, for my drum kit here, for the it's the virtual instrument, I'm going to select vMIDI 1, receive from all MIDI channels. And now when I play on my drum pad, and again, mine's a fake drum pad, the notes should come through here. The problem is, and you heard that one, the one, the one drum actually hit. Uh, I, I hit a lot of notes, and nothing really. There was nothing that sounded. And this is the problem that I was telling you about. Uh, some virtual instruments don't like the super short notes. If we look at uh, the MIDI aux note data here, you can see that each note that I hit, it, there's two events that show up, and you can see it appearing right at the bottom, pushing the rest of the data upward. You can see a note on, and immediately. Uh, at the same time stamp a note off, all right? So occasionally you'll hear a note sneak through um, in the software. You hear that one? You can hear me, I don't know if you can hear me shuffling around the keys over here. Come on. Oh, anyway, yeah, there's another one. So um, that's kind of what some of you have experienced with your drum pads. Well, so the trick is basically then to get the note off to not happen immediately, but happen after a little delay. And this is where MIDI aux is so awesome. I'm going to have you next click on this little icon here with the red and the blue note. It says MIDI data mapping transforms. And this is where we set up our new rules for how the MIDI data is going to be transformed between your drum pad and the vMIDI 1 output. So I'm going to see here, I'm going to insert a new mapping. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, discard, no, not sorry, we're going to delay note off events. So channel doesn't matter. Um, actually, I should mention too, you probably noticed here, let me go back for a sec, you probably noticed that this is all coming in over channel 10. Well, we're going to make this also at the same time, we're going to make this uh, MIDI data um, go through channel one. Now, if you already have the MIDI going through channel one, um, you don't have to. I'll, I'll show you as we go what you wouldn't have to change. But if your if your data is coming in over channel ten and you want it to come in over channel one, um, perhaps because a virtual instrument you're trying to use doesn't like data over channel ten, then um, oops, sorry, wrong button. Then I'll show you how to do that as well. So go back into the well. I'll go back into the MIDI data transforms here so I can continue on. Uh, we're going to insert uh, a new mapping, as I said, and it doesn't matter what channel it comes from, or uh, actually, yeah, it doesn't matter what channel it comes from, but the event type we're going to set to note off. Okay, so this rule only applies to note off events. Okay, so this is the source data, and this is then this line here is how it gets transformed. So we're going to set it to channel one. So, so whatever channel your data is coming through on your MIDI drum machine, it is going to go to, it's going to be forced to channel one. Um, and then what we're going to do is say the event type match input, so it'll be note off still. Uh, and we're going to put a delay in here. And we're going to set this delay to, um, uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest 30 milliseconds. That'll give you, um, I think around 30 second notes, maybe slightly short, shy of a 30 second note in general, like at 
120 BPM or whatever. But the nice thing about that is um, it gives you a little bit more to work with when you're editing the MIDI data later. Like in a piano roll view, for example, you'll actually be able to grab the notes because they won't be so tiny. So I like 30 milliseconds. Um, really, um, I the, the Acoustica Virtual Instruments, as I mentioned, um, you know, they don't like these super short notes. Um, and But all you have to do is increase the delay even just to one millisecond and it'll pick up the notes. So, But we'll go 30. I'll click OK. And now we're going to add one more rule. And this won't be necessary if you're not trying to change the MIDI channel number. But this is just going to basically take all of the other events and force them to channel one. And we're going to set that rule second. We want it to grab the note offs first, delay those first, and then the rest of the data. We'll get, we'll just get moved to channel one after that point. Now it's not, nothing's going to happen unless we click this uh, checkbox here, turn map on. So this will make sure this is activated. Then I click OK, and now you'll notice you can see that the note off events are are delayed slightly. And the other thing you'll notice is you actually hear drums. Um, which is the goal. So as you can see, that works beautifully. Um, the main, th the only thing that you just need to remember to do is before you uh, fire up your music software to go making your new awesome song, you want to start up MIDI Ox and just have that running in the background. There is an icon, I think it's this guy right here, uh, where if you click this, um, you, when you minimize it, it'll minimize to the system tray, so it kind of stays out of the way. Um, that's a nice feature. Um, let me think if there's anything else I wanted to go over with this. Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, um, let me just show you what I was talking about with the MIDI notes. Okay, I wasn't paying any attention to the metronome, but you can see that this is the note duration of the notes. That was redundant, but I can grab them, which uh, if if they were, uh, you know, the zero length notes that you typically get from a drum machine, they're kind of a real pain to edit anyway. Um, so I hope you found this useful. I hope you were able to actually follow it. You should get some sort of prize if you did. Um, but anyway. That's how I was able to solve my drum machine issues, and hopefully it'll help you solve yours as well. Take care.